Rock isn't dead. It's in flux. Hi, everyone. I'm Britt with Rock and Flux, and I am joined today by Alex of Matt Black. Thank you for, uh, for being back on the show because this is your second time. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. It was a pretty good episode last time. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, I do my best. So, um, I mean, let's just talk. Let's, let's talk about what you guys have been up to since last year. So, you have a new single out, Vows. Can you kind of just give me some information about, you know, how recording that went um, and just some background on the, on the song? Yeah, um, Vows actually, um, we may have started that song early on. Um, I think it was still pandemic time. Um, we were working, uh, I think the, uh, it was the annex. I think the annex, we were going to work on some collaborations. And he had, he said, hey, throw in some ideas. He's like, I really like your song, Western Fold. And I just went back to the drawing board and I'm like, how can I create a Western Fold-ish kind of retro track? And yeah, I, I think we had like a minute loop and immediately had the vocals. Like it was almost instant. Uh, the vocals, the I'm not afraid stuff and all that. Like, and it just kind of worked out. And at the end, you know, the guys are like, the song's done. It's not much of a collaboration at this point. <laughs> uh, so um, we ended up keeping it. We ended up keeping it. Um, and then we ended up throwing some more stuff with Brandon and, you know, working on other stuff there. He did a remix for us. Um, and we actually still have some lingering demos that we haven't really, um, caught up to cause we've just been so busy, but, um, we have some demos with, with Brandon's vocals on there, like some little sketches of stuff, but, uh, that was uh, kind of the roots of it. I should do a collab episode with both of you cause he's been on the show also. And I'm starting to do collab episodes, and I should have thought about that because that would be a cool one. Yeah, that'd probably be a really cool one. We we love Brandon, and he's super awesome, and super talented, and and you guys have worked together several times, so yeah, and that's and that's how the the song came up came to be. And then you know we haven't really released a, an album. Uh, it's been three years now since I'm waving not drowning. Um, you know, we release singles in between and a bunch of stuff, but I think we've been really focused on the live aspect of Matt Black and that phase of growing the band and our name and, and, and getting out there and building an audience. Um, but a lot of these songs, we've been performing them. So I've, we've actually been performing vows, um, I think since the first show we played, um, I think that, uh, yeah, so people have been, I've, I've heard Val, so it was called Vanta before. Um, and then when we had the concept of the album being Val, it only made sense that this song was called that since it does have a lot of uh, uh, lyrical information that kind of ties to that. So. When is the new album coming out? Do you have a release date yet? July. July, okay. So will you release a few more singles before then, like just to prepare for it? Or what do you think? Yeah, so Proxy, um, Midnight and Angel, they're a part of this album. So they're a part of this space, uh, along with Vows. So technically speaking, that would be already three singles for the album Vows. It's 11 songs. Um, um, we don't really want to release 100 singles, but there's just so much cool stuff going on in that album that it's kind of like, oh, we need to just get one more out there, you know, but... Uh, we, we have one more single for sure. Okay. Are you more of an album person or are you more of a singles person? Cause it, it is like, I mean, the industry nowadays is so single focused, but I feel like a lot of musicians still like the concept of an album. Do you have a preference on either one or? I don't have a preference. Um, I think initially when we released Matt Black, um, and I have the guys to, to thank for that. Um, you know, they kind of pushed me a little bit to kind of uh, be a little bit more old school about things. I'm, I'm pretty modern when it comes down to marketing and all that. And after releasing I'm Waving Not Drowning, I ended up realizing that um, the industry is wrong about um, 
a bad single. Yeah, I guess if you're Justin Bieber, um, a single is going to cost less and probably going to get a bunch of streams off of it. But for artists like us, I, I've noticed that uh, financially, an album is, is actually a lot more profitable um, because People still like things. They like tangible things. They want to hold things. And a single, make it in a CD, you can't. You can't really make it into an album. Um, vinyls probably our biggest selling item. We've sold out about, of it. Uh, we've sold out of CDs hundreds of times. Uh, we keep reordering CDs. And I'm like, who the hell is ordering CDs? I'm telling you, it's they don't have on the CD, show. They don't even make we CD do. players. I have. Yeah, they do. I, I ordered a little one on um, Amazon, so you can still get little portable CD players. And I mean, for me, I I, th I just I still have all my books of CDs. And I was like, you know, sometimes it's fun, especially like, you know, when you used to make all those mixed ones to go mm -hmm. back and oh, yeah, listen yeah, to yeah. what the you put steps, on on yeah. that. And so like yeah, yeah. some of them I didn't label. So I'm like, what the hell did I put on this? So I bought it to do that. And my daughter, she's 16, right? And she literally looks like what I look like back in 2003. Look, red hair. Were you like a new metal kid, like rock and new metal? I was a little bit of everything. I like bands like Placebo and I like bands like it. Um, what else was going on? Oasis and stuff like that. But I also really love Deftones. I wasn't like really deep. Like I wasn't a Slipknot guy, but I was definitely a Deftones, a Tool, uh, Linkin Park. I enjoyed Linkin Park. Yeah, I really like Linkin Park and stuff. So, um, Hybrid Theory is still a great album, I think. I, it still holds the time. And my son was three years old. He, he's on YouTube all the time. He plays drums. And Linkin Park just randomly comes on and he freaking loves Linkin Park. And I'm like, what does that tell you about music, right? That a three-year-old? And people want to talk crap on Linkin Park. Look, you, you, you have nothing to say when a three-year-old is willing to like it. Because it's pure. Yeah. So, yeah, my hat's off to, to it. But I have, I have some of my friends from my old band, they, they played in a band with Chester. And I'm like, I sent them videos of, my son kind of like doing the screen face and stuff. And yeah. they're like, oh my God, man, Chester was really doing some cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, great, great vocalist. But anyway, not, seg not segueing off the album stuff. Uh, I think people are wrong. People are wrong. People are want albums. Uh, and you can't print albums if you, you're doing singles. So for bands listening, stop listening to what people are saying about singles. Uh, unless you're Dua Lipa or... Justin Bieber or a rapper. And I mean, like, that's kind of a label thing. Like, it's cheaper for the label to do that. Like, those larger, larger labels, not necessarily the more indie ones or, you know, smaller. But I mean, I and I agree with you. And I think especially when people really like something, you want to, you want to feel, not like you own it, but like you have something, a part of it. You know what I mean? And I think the tangible aspect of that matters to people still so i agree with you yeah people want to hold stuff they want to see things uh, even if it's posters if it's, if it's anything that they can grab and hold it's that and i really don't think it's fair to put to print out um you know a vinyl of one song um i think a collection of songs are great it's very exhausting i can tell you right now i'm i'm kind of like pretty stressed out over completing this thing uh, most importantly, because it's just been a bunch of collective works that we've had and that we've been storing for a bit. And um, I think it, it's all cohesive and it's, and, and, and it's part of the work. And I think it's a better Matt Black, but it's very stressful because now I, because uh, we're, we're doing a funding for Indiegogo. It's currently active. I bought, I bought the crop top. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So. I'm, I'm, we're so honored from all the fans that have contributed. We actually hit 100%. I think we're a little over 100%. Um, that just tells you the power of fans and people that support music. Very, very exciting. But now I feel the pressure because it's like, okay, we have this album and I have to, we have to deliver, we have to deliver it. You know, you only, I think you only feel pressured about things that you really care about. So it just shows that, you know, you, know, you want to, to put out a good piece of work, which, you know, but I, I don't want to like disappoint people. I, I 
I, I need to take a break uh, from making an album because it's a lot of work, especially 11 songs. Um, and I just kind of want to take a little time to um, develop a new palette for what the new stuff is going to sound like. I have an idea of where I want to go, but I think after this album, we'll have two albums, two full pieces of work. Uh, we'll continue to focus on um, building Matt Black as a, as a band and touring. Uh, we're touring new, new places this year. Um, so we're stepping out of the U.S. Um, so th there's a lot, all these uh, stages of Matt Black that it's going there. But after this album, I'm going to need to take a break. So we will be probably doing a lot of little random tracks. Let me ask you this. What do you, and maybe they're both important in different ways. But when you are writing a song, and I know you all focus very much on the live aspect of it, do you think that playing the song live is more important than, like, how you would play that song live is more important than it would, how it would be recorded? Um, it's too different. I don't ever kind of look at it that way. Um, I mean, I guess I do think about it sometimes, of how would this work live, but... I think the live stuff is a completely different animal. Um, I think for for me as a producer, I want to create something that's innovative and different. Um, and I know probably a lot of people say that, but um, you know, I I really am looking to step outside of my boundaries and my comfort zones and really building something that's kind of reminiscent of old things with new things and. Ma mangling them into a production experience that's kind of that uh, I think people are going to be pretty surprised with a lot of the stuff that's going to come out of this album um, but now we th we will have to face those songs head on because um, some of the stuff is very difficult and frankly probably a bit unplayable um, but that's another fun aspect of the band is that I have super talented musicians that are in this band. Um, all the guys are very percussive. They understand polyrhythmic rhythms where, um, I said rhythms twice, duh. Um, uh, they understand polyrhythms and they can probably play some very difficult things, uh, whether it's in the drum section, which is a huge part of the new album. It's a lot of drum stuff. Um, and then there's a lot of intricate um, notes. So I think that's the, kind of the fun thing about playing live is that we get to hear all the individual parts, like the bass, the guitar. And some of the stuff on the bass is not playable. And I think we discussed this a little bit because it's just very fast. And it's impossible for a musician to kind of go that way. So now we have to understand, okay, are we going to strip that, add a live bass to it and see if it's a new style of a song or are we all playing drums and sometimes we have done that where we're all just literally playing drums you have a show coming up on the first right too yeah coming up we have a show in san diego um i'm very excited about the show not only because you know we're headlining um um i love the venue but most importantly the, the artists that are going to be on this on this lineup um snakes of russia and so much blood they're um I'm, I'm a fan of their music and they're just very again the innovative innovative artists uh, their sound design is just pretty next level and i'm just really excited to put on a show that is going to be a, an experience for everyone that goes from the moment that you walk in to the end of the night um so well we're, we've invested a lot of time in, into making sure that we put together a show that's not just go see Matt Black, but from the beginning up to the visual aspect of it. Um, so do you, you're, you've already, I'm assuming, like prepared for the most part, so you kind of know how you're going to play it, all the, mm -hmm. the songs at this point. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So moving forward, when you, because I know you said you're playing in, in um, other countries and stuff like that yep. later this year, are you pretty much going to use like what you already have for this show planned for those? Or do you think you'll, yeah. you'll change things up? You I think, okay. I think what we do on March 1st is going to, it's going to be what we're going to be doing throughout the year. And, you know, we hope to come to new cities and be able to perform there. Um, I do think a 
for the new, new, new places. We might throw in some of our older stuff in there, but you know, we only have like an hour 30 and, um, there's just a lot of material. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that'll be great. Hopefully you all come to Phoenix. Um, we will. We no, will. Nice. Yes. I will try to be there. Um, so let me, let me, you, you know, you're a songwriter. Do you have, I think this is an interesting question to, that I've been asking lately. And do you have songwriting advice that you would give to other people that do you, that you think is most helpful? And then in addition to that, what, do you think is the most important part of songwriting? What's the most important element of it for you? Well, first things first, I don't think I'm qualified <laughs> to give people advice. Um, I, I, I would probably provide the same advice that I've, that's been passed on to me is you make sure that you enjoy the music first, um, instead of starting trying to replicate uh, things it's a, it's okay to grab ideas and influences from things, but create something that's you that has your voice in it. Um, but you like it first. Don't question it. Um, yes, of course, send it to ten t trusted people, but go with your instinct first and say, "Hey, this is me. I want to show you this," and l let them experience that um, instead of being like. Oh, I want it to sound like X and I want it to sound like this. And I want my, because you're going to run out of that eventually. So, uh, my advice would be to stay true to yourself, like it first, make the music for you. I think that's good advice. Yeah. It makes sense because otherwise your heart's not really in it. Well, you get, you get, you get stuck in the cycles of stuff. You know, I've, I've, I've kind of gone into that, you know, I've, I've, and not just because, you know, I've written some songs that I really enjoy. And I know other people enjoy it. It's not a more popular song. Like, should I be writing more songs like this? And then I'm doing my own. I'm, I'm doing myself in by trying to compete with a song that I've already put out. Right? And I don't want to do that. Um, I don't want to re recreate something or a template that I know that works. Because at this point, it's just commerce. It's not really true. Um, so I would rather... I would rather commit, come from it. I, I would rather challenge myself to create something completely different and just enjoy it first. And it's a hard thing to do because you get in your head, especially if you got something going on and then you start getting people that like you and stuff like that. And then you start listening to them and that's how, that's how it starts happening, you know? Um, so that would be my, my advice. And what was the other uh, what do you think is the most important element of songwriting? Like when you're writing a song, what do you think is the most important thing that you can do to like feel like you're staying true to what, you know, you're and not getting distracted to what you were saying earlier? That's a very hard question because I, when I write music, I write music from a rhythm perspective first. Um, and to me, the rhythm is what's most important of it, that there is something that I respond to immediately. So I have to feel connected to music. So to me, the most important aspect of writing music for myself is I need to connect with what I'm doing first. And that usually happens with a good bass line and a good drum section. And... I don't know how to explain how information is fed back to me, but sometimes that information comes and I'm driving and I don't know. Um, I would say maybe freestyle people that are rappers probably have that. They know what word's going to come next without having to think forward. Right. So it's the same thing with me. Sometimes I have information that comes in, whether it's a pattern of something and whether it's vocally. And before I lose it, I record it on my phone. I'll literally, I'll beatbox it. <laughs> and then, because I don't want to forget it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because you'll think you'll remember it. It will go away. It will go away. It'll, you have to do it right away. So I think that for me, the most important aspect of writing music is creating, uh, creating a piece that you immediately can respond to and react to. Um, and then it all goes from there. I guess, I guess the better, the better answer is, 
Uh, go with your intuition immediately. Don't think, don't think about it too much. Um, so I, I'm going to ask some, some random questions now for, for those who have maybe listened to the last episode. So we, we change it up a little bit. So if you could collaborate with anyone, um, who do you think you would want to work with? Um, and you can give more than one if, if that's easier too. I have some weird artists I enjoy. There's this guy, his name's Grum. Um, I would, I'd actually put him in the ether. Like I've, I, I've gotten his manager's contact information and I'm going to DM him. I haven't gotten around it, but I've, he's just been on my, on my list. Um, Aaron Short, he's mixed our last two songs and he works with the artist So Below. Um, is very, it's a, I, I think it, it's a very possible collaboration because since I, I know them a, a, a bit, um, but I would really like to work on something with her. Um, most importantly, and I, I hope she doesn't see this because it's embarrassing, but every time they release something, I'm like, dude, how it's, I think it, it's, uh, Maybe so. I don't know if other musicians have ever felt this, but you feel jealousy, like and in a respectful way. More of a jealousy is like, why did that not come to me first? <laughs> <laughs> and there's very few artists that do that to me, um, and So Below is one of them. Like even the last three tracks they release is just money. It's just so good, like every track. And I'm like, oh my god! And we actually had, we had them play with us in San Diego on last year. Um, they're so great, so good. Um, I really don't know who's behind everything. I just know that you know Erin Short, um, her husband um, works on it, but I think she has other collaborators. But the music's so good. Like, it's so good up to the point where I'm just like, I want to do a collaboration with, with her at some point. I think it'll be a cohesive sound with what we do. Okay, cool. Um, I had actually Matt McJunkins on the show a few weeks ago. Oh, yeah. And you, yeah, and you came up because um, he's worked with you before. And he, I mean, he had nothing, nothing but great things to say about you oh, and, and Matt Black as a whole. So <laughs> We probably annoyed the heck out of him. I don't know. He he said he that you're great and that he really like because I mean you guys do have it, Matt Black has a very unique sound and I don't I I I mean when I first heard it I was like this is so cool I, oh, I really there's not much out out there like it um so yeah I mean that's that's the truth you guys are awesome so. I, I never think of like more intelligent ways to say that when I'm like on the show, but what it's very unique. And I think that you all have stayed true to yourselves. And I think that, you know, you can hear that in your music because there's a lot of stuff out there that's not like that. So, um, so, I mean, you kind of answered this, but what, like, what other music are you listening to right now? Is there anything that people always want to know, like what, the musicians they like want to hear well or... we're gonna do and this is a plan that i'm doing i'm gonna have the band members we're gonna create a uh play individual playlist for each band member on spotify so i think we have one right now and that's going pretty strong it's a pretty cool playlist but that's just a bunch of like uh genre based music which kind of fit the parameters of what we do but i think it would be interesting to create a playlist for each band member, have each band member on the Spotify, and that way you can kind of get to know them. But I go back and forth. I, I listen to a lot of um, ambient music. You know, I listen to Bjork, um, Sigur Rós. Sometimes I get in the mood for some, you know, some Tool, uh, Radiohead, and then I'll start listening to newer stuff um, like So Below. And then I'll, you know, there's a chick named Nox Vomica from, I think she's from New York. It's kind of techno, kind of EBM stuff. And she's like brand, brand new. I really like her stuff. 
Um, and I'm lucky that to have a lot of friends that are musicians that are great. You know, the new Twin Tribes albums, freaking pretty cool. We just had them on the show. Uh, like their episode aired. I saw them. They came out here and, and I caught their show. Their album's excellent. Great production. So I kind of jump around a bit. Um, I, I, I get a little moody sometimes and I like, I like listening to sad stuff. Um, but yeah, I go back and, and I'll listen to some kind of like super droughty um, type of music. People will be surprised. I, I like pop music a lot. So. Well, I mean, I think everybody listens to a variety of things. Like I, I never say I don't listen to any type of music. I mean, I guess I don't listen to a ton of country, but I'm sure I, if I looked for it, I could find one that I could appreciate, you know? So I think that's the thing about music. And actually, that's my next question to you is what is your favorite thing about music as a whole? I think it's just the emotional aspect and some of the nostalgia. It's almost like kind of like your sensories, right? You you smell something and it takes you somewhere. And I think music is something to experience and it should be um, hold with high regard, you know? Um, that's why it's kind of, it, it saddens me that music has become kind of like aftermarket stuff where it's like, we, what would we do without this music? You know, coffee shops, where would they be without music? Restaurants, where would they be? Uh, commercials, where would they be without music? And then I don't understand. I hope more people realize it, but I worry sometimes that people don't. I mean, it, it's something as simple as the grocery store. If you walked in there and there wasn't anything playing, you, you'd be like, what is going on? But like, if you're in there and sometimes it's just like dropping good stuff. And I mean, for me, maybe not everybody does this, but I'll be like, oh, they're playing great stuff today. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know. It changes my shopping experience. So I don't know. I, I hope that people appreciate it. But yeah, I don't know. And even movies. I mean, soundtracks, like think about like the 80s and the John Hughes movies and all of those things. Like that movie wouldn't be the same necessarily without some of that. So so final question for you. And I, someone asked me this recently, and I think it's an interesting topic because I don't think a lot of us necessarily think about it. But how do you define success? And like, how, at what, is there ever a point where like, you feel that it's like, okay, I've completed my goals with, with Matt Black, and like, this is the point where I deem us successful? Yeah. I mean, with it, there's, we, Matt Black has a very strange um, way that it operates. Uh, we set goals, and those goals need to hit, and they need to um, be met. And I think the fact that we have three different people on this band, and I think we all have different roles besides being the musicians in it. And I think we have a very, um, we're very lucky to have each other. And I feel that there's uh, often some in the universe has done this. And, you know, in, in what world does the lead singer uh, understand marketing and digital marketing and um, concepts of business? Um, I, I own, I'm a business owner outside of this and my role in the band is not only to be the lead singer, to also produce and, and, and write lyrics, but also manage the, the business of Matt Black and also come up with the marketing strategies for it. Uh, Biddy is the man, more of the manager, so he, he'll handle more of um, the booking and responding to emails. Uh, merchandise, merchandising, and Danny is more of the content creator. So he's our our art director. People always comment like, "Who the hell makes your videos?" Oh, yeah. it's Danny. Okay, because I was going to say you have the music video for Vows that just actually dropped today. That was, that's Danny. So we have these parameters, these goals that need to be met. So the goal may be let's reach twenty thousand followers on Instagram. Okay, well, I would rate that a success. We now have 26,000, right? Um, the goal was to hit $7,000 on our Indiegogo campaign. We've hit $7,000 on our Indiegogo campaign. Our goal is to sell out show, one show. 
Well, we sold out a show and then we sold out port. Uh, our goal is to, so we, we look at success as that is hitting the hitting milestones. Um, I think at this point I would look at if we were to just stop doing map blog, I would, I would be proud of what we've done. Um, because we've reached a lot of milestones. And we did it without a label. We did it without management. We did it without uh, an agent. Uh, we did it all alone by ourselves with just putting our brains together and and creating something that's coming from a real place. That's um, that it's uh, focused and intentional. And I'm proud of that. And I would consider this a success right now, but. Maybe later on, it's like, well, we need to play theaters. And only then would we be successful. Uh, so there's those milestones that we have to hit, and we're, we're still in the early stages. But I would describe success as hitting your own personal milestones and your own personal goals and having them set. If a band doesn't have a goal and the goal is, well, we just want to be popular. Well, what is that? What does right. popular mean? Right. Because that's the thing. Like... Are you popular because you have thousands of people or are you popular because like you have a few that literally will travel to the ends of the world to see you like, you know? So it just depends on that. You know, I have friends or professional musicians that have half a million monthly listeners on Spotify, but they can't get people to a show. Well, what's going on here? To me, I'm like, well, we have only 20,000 monthly listeners. He has half a million. But he's like, dude, you sell merch and you sell like, so there are these different things. And, and I guess success would be described in a different way. I mean, I, I stopped looking at stats for a, a very long time ago. And I think at the end of the day, it's our people showing up to our shows. And that's what's more important to us is that we have people that are there because they like us. But I think that's how you build the real fan base, too, is in that live setting. It, it is in that live setting. Yeah, it is, in, it is in that live setting. So are people showing up? And um, But yeah, I, I think success can be measured in, in very short uh, milestones. And okay, this is my goal is to get here. And sometimes you don't even think about it. Because like someone asked me that. They're like, well, how do you define success for this? And I'm like... You know, I've never really even thought about it, to be honest with you, you know, like, but I do. I think setting small goals and reaching them and then continuing on from there, because uh, in some ways, if you do that, you're never really satisfied because there's always something new that you're trying to. Right, attain. right. And it's, it can be, like I said, it can be hard. It's like, man, well, we don't have that much this. And you start, you're just never going to be able to catch up because there's always going to be that, you know, there's. Level A bands, there's level B bands, level C bands. And, you know, look, you've seen every movie. You've seen the Elton John movie. You've seen Queen, Michael Jackson, all this stuff. They, what do they say? At the end, they're at the top, there's a big mansion, and they're alone. And they're not satisfied. And I, I think that's kind of, it's a difficult question, I think looking at success and measuring it a little bit at the time, I think that's, that's the best way to go and staying true to it and being proud of what you're doing. I think uh, that is successful. Uh, I have a beautiful family and I think that's successful. Yeah, I agree. I just think it's such an interesting introspective question that I never really had necessarily asked myself. So I find it interesting to see different people's perspectives on it. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's as it's, it's as small as that. I mean, our our goal was to we're stuck at three thousand, at uh, three thousand Instagram followers. And we're like, well, let's make it a goal to grow that, and then we focused on that, and we got towards that. And it's nothing compared to Kim Kardashian and those people, but for little people like us, man, we're we're like, hey, look. But it's also good that you did it on your own. You know, and I think there's something to be said for that because you don't have a television show 
or, you know, all the other things that she's got that have given her those followers, right? So, you know, it's all relative, right? <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Just to put it into perspective, you know, our, our success is measured in such a small way and we're super tiny band and we're, we're happy with what we got. Well, I'm happy that, that you all are creating the music you are because, and, and you're, you're a great band and great people. And, uh, I fully support what, what you all are doing. So yeah. Anything else that you want listeners to know before, before we sign off? Sure. Look out for Vals, our new single. Head over to our Indiegogo um, page. Um, it's going to be open there for another 30 days. Um, there's tons of stuff, sweaters. Um, you could put your name on the vinyl forever. Um, you know, if you're a fan of our band and you'd like to own a tangible item that from one of your favorite bands and your name is on it right now is your chance to go there and help support it it's not like you're just giving us money you're going to get your stuff you're going to get sweaters you can get cd whatever you're getting it's just helping us get there first to be able to produce it for you um but go and and, and support if you can other than that just share our music uh follow us comment um catch one of our shows we should, we're routing a tour right now. So keep an eye out for uh, tour dates. Um, and we're excited to um, show you the next face of it. I, I'm really, really, really proud of the, the new stuff that's coming up. And I'm not just saying that because I know a lot of bands say, it's like, this is a new piece. No, this stuff arguably is probably some of the coolest stuff that that we've done i i think it's very innovative stuff nice looking forward to it so july yes is when it's coming out okay well thank you alex for uh for being here again it was great to have you and everyone give matt black a listen we're going to play vowels at the end of this episode so check them out on instagram all the streaming platforms and thank you for listening <laughs> <laughs>